Ahmadinejad renews his country's stance in support of Syria. The Syrian Arab army units continue chasing the terrorist armed groups inflicting heavy casualties among them. Confrontations are renewed in Egypt's Bor Said and the Salvation Front accuses the Muslim Brotherhoods of attacking demonstrators in El Mansoura. Good afternoon. Welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. In his meeting with the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Walid al-Mu'allim, in Tehran, the Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad asserted that Iran continues to stand by Syria against the war waged on it. He stressed that the only way to solve the crisis is to stop violence and to engage in a national dialogue through the political program presented by President al-Assad. He pointed out that Syria would be victorious through the wisdom of its leadership and the people's support. Mr. Mu'allem briefed the Iranian president on developments in Syria and the dimensions of the plot against it and the smuggling of terrorists from regional and international countries, including the so-called Victory Front and other terrorist groups trained, armed and financed to carry out terrorist acts against the Syrian people and their property. Mr. Muallim also met with Saeed Jalili, Secretary of the Iranian Higher Council of National Security, and briefed him on the current situation in, in Syria. Jalili stressed the importance of continuing consultation and coordination between the two countries. He expressed belief that Syria would win its battle against the plot that is concocted against its people, who support their leadership. Two mortar shells were fired by the terrorists in Damascus. The first one landed near the warehouse of the Free Zone, and the second slammed into the surroundings of the customs building in the city. The attacks caused material damage only, according to initial information. A military source said that units of our valiant army confronted terrorist groups that tried to attack a military point in Raqqa and killed many terrorists, including three of their leaders. The source added that a convoy of terrorist vehicles supplied with heavy machine guns were destroyed with all the weapons and ammunition they were carrying, including an anti-aircraft gun. In Deir Zor, a unit of our valiant army carried out a qualitative operations against a terrorist hideout in Al Huayqa quarter. They destroyed three vehicles carrying heavy machine guns and killed and wounded a number of terrorists. Another unit stormed a terrorist hideout in the countryside. In the countryside of Idlib, a unit of our valiant armed forces stormed terrorist groups and hideouts near Marit in Norman and in Jisr al-Shurur and in Anurb. The terrorists were killed and wounded and their equipments were destroyed. In Hama countryside, a unit of the Syrian Ar Arab army clashed with a terrorist group in the village of Talmili, killing many terrorists and injuring others. Among the terrorists killed was, were Suhaib Hassan al-Najib and leader of al-Nusra Front in the governorate. In Homs, units of our armed forces restored security and stability to the areas of Jobat Kafraya and al Sultania. While they were combing these areas, they found weapons and ammunition in the terrorist hideouts, including Russian machine guns and locally made missiles, RPGs, night binoculars, explosive devices and stolen car plates. Under the title, the French cameraman who was killed in Syria who worked for Al-Qaeda, the Canadian website of Global Research published a report about the killing of the French reporter Olivier Voisin in Syria. The website pointed out that the British newspaper Daily Mail revealed in a report that the French cameraman was killed by a shrapnel he received during his coverage of an operation by a terrorist group north of Syria. 
The website also indicated that the Washington Post newspaper, which confirmed that the Western countries supported the armed men in Syria and provided them with weapons through the neighboring countries, has pointed out by a number of its journalists that Olivier found himself among extremists in the north in order to gain media information from them. Yet, these gains cost him his life. Olivier Voisin was working for the Organization of Correspondents Without Borders, which is funded by the National Scholarship for Democracy in Washington, which is affiliated to the U.S. State Department, and its board is formed of a new conservatives and capitalists who are 30 thirsty for wars. <laughs> In Iraq, four people, including a soldier, were killed and 11 others, including three policemen, were injured in separate terrorist attacks. Iraqi police said that three roadside bombs exploded in El Husseiniya, northeast of Baghdad, killing three civilians and injuring 11 others, including policemen. An Iraqi police officer also said that a soldier was killed in a bomb planted in his car in El Otefia, north of the country. At the same time, a suicide bomber blew off his explosive belt between the tombs of Al Hussein and Al Abbas in Karbala. In Egypt, demonstrators marched today from El Tahrir Square into the Foreign Ministry to protest to the two-day visit of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Meanwhile, confrontations were renewed today in Port Said, which is witnessing a public strike calling for the toppling of President Morsi and his Muslim Brotherhood. The governorate of El Ismaili had started its first day of strike as dozens of revolutionary parties organized a sit-in along the railway, leading to the city of Abu Swear, cutting the two-way train movement between Cairo and Port Said. They also closed the directorates of the workers' forces, the agriculture and the taxes services. Also in the area of Neji Hamada in the governorate of Qana, residents held a sit-in along the railway line stopping the train movement in protest against the lack of fuel. Meanwhile, the opposition National Rescue Front accused the Muslim Brotherhood group of severely attacking the demonstrators in El Mansura and of breaking into the field hospital and the headquarters of the popular current, destroying their furniture and arresting the injured people. This brings us to the end of our news bulletin. It's over to Vani after the break. God bless you and long live Syria.